Hey guys, I'm Wes the Wolf, and I'm here with Simple Fox again. This is our just finished podcast. It's about talking about a game we just finished. This time, it's Finding Paradise. And yeah. TLDR, one out of ten. I hate you. What do you give it? That's a nine or a ten on. Well, yeah, nine or ten on my boat. Yeah, I would go for what it is. Yeah, for well, I mean, for what it is, I would give it a ten out of ten. It's an RPG maker game. Is it still an RPG maker? I'm 99% sure. They may, I think they went to their own, they did something, but yeah, it's, this isn't, well, it is quality, but it, this is a story game. Nothing more, nothing less. It is a pixel art story game. Well, there is, there is puzzles. We'll get to, <laughs> we'll get to that. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would give it an 8 or a 9 as a video game and then a 10 out of 10 if I'm going by what it is. So we're big fans mm -hmm. of To the Moon, and this is its sequel it's real sequel yeah well there were some mini series and just some side stuff as ken go was milling around with the story this man takes his freaking time with a story but i mean quality over quantity right it's really good i i'm glad you liked it i was really i did but i spent two hours crying so you, sp you spent two hours crying That's i spent a pretty decent amount of time tearing up okay we no no spoilers. but i'm also a softie yeah uh, so. I didn't like it as much as To the Moon. It was it was really good, but I it was funnier though. I will say that I thought this one was a lot funnier than yeah. To the Moon. Well, let's cover other the other items other than the story because the story, you, the story is just spoilers. Well, the to the story is ninety percent of the game though. Yeah, but we could go with like the art style in this one. This one was pretty fun, as. An RP, well, we don't know, but it's a pixel story game. But the art's pretty good. I mean, for what it is, for an RPG maker game, yeah, it's a, the sprites are really well... Uh, but there's a lot of animation to it, cool. and some of the art, like the sprite-based games I've played, like, the rooms are kind of empty sometimes. They just do a little bit, and it's just, here's a bed, here's a side table, that's a bedroom. No, this one's got... But a bedroom, they've got carpets, they've got lamps in reasonable places, they got paintings on the wall, and the paintings sometimes actually have meetings, so they actually fill these areas with things. They actually put a little counter on the dude's, dude's um, like his little workshop area. They have counters above his, of his computer, he's got an airplane over here. So it's, uh, there's a bit more art to it, and I just like the style of the art. Yeah, I really liked it too. And you're right, I never really thought about it, but they do put a lot of items into the world to yeah. make it feel real. They don't just, here's a bedroom with three items in it. No, a bedroom. This is what you could see somebody doing. This is what you see them living in. Yeah. No, they did a good job for that. It, it's still extremely limited by the sprite style, though, and the yeah. RPG maker limitations. Anyone looking at the game would be trying to figure out why you're playing it, basically, without any of the context of what you're doing. Well, yeah, it's a story-based game. It's not even... I wouldn't even say it was, like, stylized, like, kind of the uh, retro style you see nowadays. That's no, it's H not... We call it pixelated. It's not pixelated. Well, it is pixelated, but it's not, like... It's very high resolution. It's incredibly well, high. You never actually see the corner of a pixel is what I'm going for. I, mm, I'm not sure if I agree with that. I mean, it does look pixelated, but it doesn't look like it's trying to go for a stylized thing like Shovel Knight would be no. or anything like that. It's not trying to ape, ape a Nintendo 64 and whatnot. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's that's all I'm bound to have for the visuals. There's not much to say on that part. No. What about music? The thing with, and this was also similar with To the Moon, a lot of nice background music, nothing that I want to congratulate, but then, I wish I looked up her name, the singer, mm -hmm. before this, but, and then they have one song in the game that is either the final song or one of the climactic songs that are just so beautifully done. I I mean, I think all the songs are really well done. They're not, They're yeah. not like... One-off ones I would be listening to myself, but they are, like, really great theme setters. Yes, he does good... That's what I'm saying. It's a lot of good background or ambiance music. But then they have the one vocalized song to emphasize a moment or emphasize a scene. And, damn... It helps that they write the song for the scene, too. Mm -hmm. But, damn, that stings. 
Right. right? Uh, and and through the movie not, and this one, it stung and hard. You wouldn't be able to tell it by looking at the game, but it's actually a full piano and I wouldn't say Jello. orchestra, but completely uh, yeah. acoustic mm-hmm. steam. It's not 8-bit or anything like that. Yeah. So we got... Get uh, puzzles. You mentioned puzzles. And... Oh yeah. So let's let's talk about. Let's get to the bare bones of the story, just and that'll lead us into the puzzles. Yes. So basically, you're picking up from where To the Moon left off, and basically, Into the Moon and in Finding Paradise, you play as two scientists or really engineers. Yeah. Well, one's a, one's essentially a psychology major. The other one is a technician. Right. And they are working for a corporation that. Sigmund. Ba- Sigmund Corp, which basically, they you sign a contract with them, and right before they die, they change Be- your... Before you die. They aren't going to die. Right, before you die, after you sign a contract with them, they change your memories in order to make you think that a certain thing happened, depending they on... They fulfill your last wish. Whatever. You think you fulfilled your last wish. Right. Your last wish, or whatever you want to change in your memory. Maybe it's... one less regret... Maybe you actually wanted to do a start, stage dive with Ozzy Osbourne. Right. And you do this by going into the earliest memory and finding different mementos that are tied into well, your past and discover... The earliest, I will clarify, the earliest recent memory. So everybody in the in both Finding Paradise and To the Moon, the first memory, they, they're like 80. You talk to the person's most recent memory, they're 80, and then you slowly work your way backwards. Right. When I say finding... the most recent memory, I'm literally meaning the mo- what recent. you had for breakfast yesterday yeah, kind of deal. the most recent cognitive memory. And then you have to find mementos, and the mementos lead you farther back. For instance, you find the man's cell phone, and you can use that as a memento, and it will take you back to when you he first got the cell phone. And it's like, okay, now here's his journal... So you jump back in mementos, and it's items or items that have relevance to that person earlier stages in their life. Right, and you'll see keep seeing them as you go back and back. And the point is yes. to get to the point in which you'll be able to change his memories and link. You it up. get to their early, early childhood, and the idea is doing very small. Well, not really, not necessarily his early childhood. It was like that into the moon because that's where they needed yes. to change it. But just where to where they need to start a massive change yes. in, uh, and all they memory. do is, if you well for the first game it was he wanted to go to the moon. All right, so NASA showed up to your school and gave you a space program, and that's how it starts. Your brain kind of fills in the gaps from there. There's the idea of it. This game's a little bit different, but we gotta wait for the story on that one. Right. So usually it's they but- go back linearly, like from eighty to seventy to sixty to fifty. Until they can change the moment in your brain and then get you whatever wish you wanted. Right. So when you do pop into a new timeline, you look around for the mementos. You get four or five or how many there are in that world. And then you go to the linked memento that'll jump you into a different time. When you reach that linked memento, you are prompted with a puzzle that you must solve before going into the the next memory. Right. That's what makes it a game. And I'm surprised he kept them in, I gotta say. Uh, Bird Story, which was the next full game before this, it was kind of a prequel yeah, to the half stuff. game. Right. Three Force. You realize that the kid from Bird yes. Story is the main character in, in or Finding the, Paradise. Is yes. the patient rather in Finding Paradise. Mm-hmm. And okay, Finding Paradise had some cool puzzles in it. This are kind of sliding block puzzles. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much all they are. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of glad you they're mean there. To the Moon had good puzzles in it. is that what you're saying no like finding right. the bird story had weird like motions of folding a plane oh and building i see it. what you're saying those were really fun this one they're just sliding block puzzles that well i'm kind of glad they're there because if it was just i think i would hit the story too fast and i kind of like sitting down with a puzzle thinking through and as you explore an area like finding the little mementos and then moving on to the big one you get little story nuggets of that scene and okay. So you get that's how you get a good bit of the story of their ha- past and history. Okay, I disagree. I don't like the puzzles, and I'm surprised he kept them into the game because I always thought that was the weakest part of the Tomb of the Moon, and it felt like a peace offering. As no, really, this is a game kind of thing. 
He didn't. Re I, 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 and I'm completely playing psychologist on this. I don't actually mm -hmm. know, but it seemed like uh, out of left field. Everything of it was so narrative based and not very puzzle heavy. It was just you're moving through a yeah. movie basically by your own control, and then you're prompted with a uh, weird sliding block puzzle. Right, and then in this one it was the same thing except I don't know about you, but the puzzle was way easier, and that didn't make it any better. And I dislike it in these games because I'm playing it for the narrative. B mm -hmm. A. And I think that's, it's definitely the most shining part of the game, and it completely disrupts it for no reason, in my opinion. It, I think it would have been way more interesting if the puzzles were somehow linked into the story. I kind of agreed to that. I like the idea of, because when you explore the person's memory and you have to think about, and you get little story nuggets and collect the smaller mementos to get to the linked one, I would like some way to just sit and think through what I just saw, which is kind of what it does there. I agree. These puzzles were pathetic. They were kind of boring. I mean, one of them, I pretty much just, I looked at it and so said, the way I solve this is by just pushing this one block a hundred times and it will actually solve itself. Right. So that's not necessarily fun. If they were more to it, I'm glad they were there, but they weren't good. I, something that was into the moon too, is it had a number of moves you get to get the best choice. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You know, so for instance, for this puzzle, you can do it in six moves. You can have however many moves you want, but it's the, but there's the, the best, better. the best answer is with six moves. They, I didn't, was that even in this nope. one? Nope, it was not. That seems like a miss on my part. On that part. I mean, it wasn't that big of a thing for the game, but it made it more of a challenge, at least, that you could put on yourself. Yeah, but then you have to add into the repeating it. Yeah. Which, yeah. So, what else? Okay, visuals, audio. Audio was what it was. I think the sound effects were fine. That was going for more songs, but we still got the songs already. Yeah, we already got the songs. Yeah. I always thought it was weird to hear some of the audio sound effects in the game because it's the pixels and it sounds like a real car door and stuff. It just, there was a disconnect for me. I never thought it looked all that pixelated, so I bought it for the most part. I mean, I guess so. When I'm playing through it, I don't actively think, oh, this looks awful. I, mean, I think it looks pretty good. But the sheer fact of the matter is, even if it is story-based, it doesn't matter what shell it has. Well, it has to be good story in that case, and it has to kind of fit the scene. And I try to think through, would there be a different style, like better graphics? I don't think better graphics would improve this game. Uh, I think you'd run into a lot of problems if you did a different graphic style. I think well, this is the you... best graphics you're going to have for the sprite kind of stuff. But if you go into like a 3D model scenario, then you have to worry about facial expressions and facial expressions and then looking at people and then moving your neck. It mm. Right. And there's certain like This is a good way to focus on the story. Right. Like and this is all that it wants. It just wants you to focus on the story. Tales or uh, Telltale games can kind of do their stories, although these guys beat can go beats Telltale games out of the water. Well, the story stuff. does. Yes. Yes. But there's a level of immersion Telltale Games has that beats to the moon. And yes. Or these games but it's definitely. choice. Yeah. yeah, a good bit of this. Yeah. I've got a complaint, but that it's also kind of a bit of a story complaint, so hold it till that. Well, okay. Well, right before we go into it, because we do these uh, just finishes and halves, right? Mm hmm. With the spoiler half coming up here soon. Did you like the story? Did you. Oh, Yes. Yeah, the story's definitely I think the I best can, part. I think the answer is yes when I said I cried for two hours. I think that says I like... Well, okay. See, the, 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 That's the type of, like, I hate myself like. Here's the thing I liked about uh, Freebird Games. That's the developer. Uh, and mm -hmm. Ken Gell's the head lead developer, but he's mostly a one-man team. Yeah. As the way I understand it. But when he... Uh, the thing I like about these games a lot is... Movie-wise, this is kind of a rom-com kind of drama thing. Can you think of another video game that's a rom-com? Um, you're putting me on a spot for a question like that. Like, I can't think of a single one. I always thought it was weird that, like, a lot of movie genres I mean, don't this translate is... over. But this is probably the best translation You could easily over. take this into a movie. It wouldn't be too hard. Right. Maybe, well, well it's the just special you... effects in this one would be insane, but... 
the uh I'm just saying, you know, from a video game standpoint, this story is super unique because it's a genre Romantical that's, comedy. Yeah, well, it's a genre yeah. that's not treaded a lot in video games, as its main focus, at the very least. Yeah, I would... I don't know if rom-com is the right one, because... Yeah, rom-com... This, this is, is more a of, movie. I would, I would... It's a movie game. I would put this more of a drama, yeah. Well, it feels like one. The narrative... It is a comedy, movie. and the com... Well, it's pop culture, and rom-coms don't do pop culture at least well. And this one kind of does pop culture well. Debatably well. So, yeah. We all give the reading endorsement. So, we're going into the spoilers yeah. now. Spoilers. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Ow, I hate you. Ow, you, you hate me? Because it's such a good... St okay, where do we start? Well, for starters, on this one, contrary, and even the characters are surprised... You're supposed to work back from the character being 80, 70, 60, 40, so on and so forth. Mm. You go from 80 to 5. Right. And then to 70, and then to 10, and then to 60, and then to 15. So you went in a circle. Right. And, like, the end point of the game was when he's, like, 20, 25. Right. Or essentially when you've cycled his entire life. So you go back and forth, and continually, as you go back and forth, in his older life, you see his wife, Sophie. In your younger life, you see his childhood friend, what is her, Faye? Faye, yeah. Faye. Faye, and it keeps going back and forth. And I had guesses, because they tricked me. Because Faye and Sophie have the exact same sleeping pattern, very similar personalities. I'm like, okay, the twist is his childhood friend became his wife and changed her name. Mm-hmm. That's what I was guessing, because mm -hmm. it made the most amount of sense to me. And they, she, what was it, Sophie said the first time they met he was weird? You see, I thought the twist was the fact that she died or killed herself. I thought that's oh, what yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, like Faye died. Yeah. But, what? yeah, the twist at the end was the fact that uh, they were trying to find... The very, yeah. one of the very last that memories was, was... Well, actually, we should start with his wish. Because his wish was actually probably my favorite for the game. Because mm -hmm. the first one was, the guy wanted to go to the moon. This guy wanted... Eh, he wanted to be a little bit better. Yeah. That was it. He He's just like... Basically, his thing was, you ever notice that some of the choices you made in your life were like... Not as great as they could have been? I was just standing at that going, huh? His answer was he just wanted like us to go back and fix some of his little regrets, just those small ones. Like he didn't ha he didn't like run over a kid or something or run over kill somebody on accident. He didn't have a big regret. He just had a, you know, I spilled my drink on my honeymoon. I wish I didn't do that. My last flight as an airline pilot, my landing was meh, and it was meh. It was it wasn't I crashed. It was meh. A little kid complained about it being bumpy, and that apparently distraught me. <laughs> right, and the, you... The, Sigmund's got to charge a premium. This has <laughs> got to be expensive. That's a good point. I actually don't know. <laughs> I was wondering that at the time. <laughs> but um, like, You can't just get this replaced, at least not cheaply, but hey, if you got money... Airline pilots actually... No, they'd have pretty good health care. Right. It was a really weird request for the Sigma Corp, too, because they were like... They're oh, used this, to this, it being this... a pop star. I wanted to be a pop star or yeah. something. Right. They uh, they void his warranty, basically. They said, we're not making any promises that we can do this. Because, well, he practically says, I want you to just clean it up. That's uh -huh. all he asks for. And it's like, most people want, like, stuff. Uh -huh. You just want us to s clean up a bit. Uh -huh. But... And then, but one of the big the big thing that they needed to clean up was uh, Faye, right? Well, that's what they got questioned about, because Faye kept on showing up, and it was they got confused because Faye is never in a later memory, mm -hmm. and they're like, okay, so should they we maybe make him fall in love with Faye instead of Sophie because right. they like when he's twenty, Faye and Sophie are shown they're never shown in the same room but they're shown in the same time areas so like he's he leaves Faye outside the concert hall and sees sophie inside playing the piano so he sees both the girls at the same time and they're like well the dude did explicitly say please don't mess with my family i don't want to forget either my son or my wife right so they thought they were gonna have to delete sophie 
well, they thought they were going to have to delete Sophie and Faye take the place or get rid of Faye because he may feel oh, bad sorry, that I mean, he get rid of Faye. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. They were thinking maybe he regrets never seeing through with Faye. Right. So let's just get rid of her because he's probably that regret that he doesn't want to tell his wife that he forgot about his one childhood friend that was a beautiful friend <clears throat> that he never actually went off and fell in love with. Yeah. That's what they thought. Right. And then that scene they had paused, Faye was standing there, and then she started moving. Right. They paused the memory and Faye started moving. Right. Though she's paused. Right. She became sentient. And they found out... Faye was an imaginary friend the whole time. That was the fucking twist. Right. And the fact that she was unable to pause was A, because they... Neil took some restraints off the... The machine that he uses in this game, they have the machine that allows you to jack another person's brain. He has two. He has the one given to him by Sigmund, and then he has his own version that's jailbroke. Mm -hmm. And being since this imaginary friend was more than just... Like, this was a very strong imaginary friend who was talked to him every night, who convinced him who was always there... She was a very present imaginary friend and did a lot. It was so real to the point where when it first revealed, it was like, oh, he's schizophrenic. Oh, that's what you thought? Yeah, I immediately thought that. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I, I thought that was the so, twist, but no, it was with just... A, a strong he, imaginary friend and a jailbroke machine, the thing more or less, yeah, became sentient. And right. started fighting you for the memories and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that was unnerving. Yeah, it was really creepy, actually. Yeah, it was, and not the fact that she... She kind of acts kind of creepy sometimes. Yeah. So it was... Ugh. Did you get the Final Fantasy reference at the end with the angel form and whatnot? I just saw the angel form and just went with it. No, that was a... Rev there was a shit ton of video game references in the game. Well, yeah, the dude screams a duke and then opens the mementos and whatnot. They didn't do that as much in the later game... I, I really liked, it's my favorite part about To the Moon and Finding Paradise is the banter between, uh... uh Ro Rosa and Dr. Watts. Right. Or Dr. Roselia. Roselia. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, their banter is fantastic. It's kind of like our banter. It's very toxic, but it's, actually, they have a professional situation and we actually semi-like each other. Yeah, I think... Th what they did you like... say yesterday? They... We only like each other because of the gay sex. What? Yeah, basically. No, but, um, the, uh... They have a very professional relationship, and I think they like each other too, but it's the whole thing. They're fine with friends, but they're, it's the toxic relationship where the insults are compliments. Right, but Rosal is, or... What, Rosalia. Rosalia, I don't know. Yeah. Rosaline, sorry, it's Rosaline. Rosaline, Rosaline, I apologize. Okay, Rosaline is more of a straight-laced, by-the-books kind of character, very serious. Mm, and then yeah. Dr. Watch She's is... She's not too uptight. Dr. Watts is a fucking goofball. Yeah. That's, that's the back and forth. A goofball and a super nerd. Yeah. Basically. But the, the entire thing is just basically, hey, I'm going to do the thing. Don't do the thing. Oh, I did the thing. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, I want to uh, try stuff. Yeah, basically. And they had the character customization engine at the very start. I laughed at that. Did you? They did both had to get... Beards. I, I, I gave her beard, yeah. Yeah. And changed her socks because... He compliments the socks. I laughed at that. <laughs> it's just like, uh, fine, I'll keep it until we find the one, the most recent marriage. Fine, we'll, we're changing back when we find Colin. Okay? Nice socks, by the way. You're welcome. But you don't get to see the socks. Right. On neither character. You can change the hair and then the beard and then it's like, you're changing their socks. Am I? Okay, whatever. Oh, with the very beginning, with the little girl that got her thing thrown into the... Uh, yes. The little bear... At, who did you pick to help? Um, I grabbed the little bear. Well, well you can either help the little... You can get yeah, the who, bear or you who, can beat up the big girl. Who did girl. you pick to help? Oh, Rosaline. Rosaline? I picked Watts. Oh. Oh my god. The, the, the Mr. Watts thing was funny. It was... You had to help a little girl who's being picked on. Right, she had a her... A bully threw her bear into a lake, and right. you had to choose which of the two scientists would have to jump into the water and get it for her. Right, but if you picked Neil, Neil goes to the other kid and says, Hey, can I... What's your thing right there? He's like, oh, that's a nice... <laughs> that's a nice thing. He says, is this so-and-so? He's like comparing and talking about it and whatnot. Great. And then he punts it into the water, and, <laughs> and Rosaline's like, Neil, what the fuck? And he's like, fixed! And then you walk away. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's amazing. Ah, uh, Neil the horrible man. I love Neil. Neil's my favorite. Uh, um, but yeah, I liked the twist. I don't think it was nearly as good as To the Moon's twist. That was because To was... the To the Moon hinted what the twist was at the very end. What do you mean by hinted? We're gonna spoil To the Moon. They yeah. had the whole bunk bed scene. And well, what? the bunk... Oh, you didn't even notice. The bunk... The, with the two of the moon, the big twist was... Like, throughout the game, the one... The main... Your patient was always, like, people would mispronounce his name and whatnot. And you couldn't reach his, like, earliest memory. It's because his brother was accidentally killed. And his parents gave him pills to suppress the memory. Because a small kid and just watched his brother get run over by a car. So you're going to want to suppress those memories. And it ended up screwing him up in his later life with a bit of mental psychosis with it. He was I don't, fine. I don't think he was purposely being his he, memory suppressed. He I, was get, he was given pills. That's right, why he was given pills, but I think they were antidepressants with the side effect of memory. Mm -hmm. Memory, not forgetfulness, but fuzziness. He, yeah, it pretty much fuzzes out the memory. And that the twist was learning Beta that. Block. But that was... Beta blockers? Beta blockers, yeah. Yeah. That was foreshadowed... In the memory that it happens in. Right. Like, it walks in, here's the kid's bedroom when he's a little kid, it's bunk beds. I got that, you didn't, but you're an only child and I have an older brother, or younger mm -hmm. brother. So I'm like, bunk beds, he had another brother, shit, he's dead. Mm-hmm. So, in this one, I would, I would say they foreshadowed it a little bit more. Really? Because you never see Faye talk to anybody. That's a good point. You only ever see her talk to the main character... And, well, yeah, she only ever talks to one person ever. It's you. And, yeah, pretty much. That's a good way to point it out. And she's, throughout the game, you see, like, there's a scene where they're flying in the sky, and you guys have to essentially paratroop down and land on the plane. R Rosaline jumps out, but Watts is pushed. Mm -hmm. And then there's an other scenes where... The patient's playing with his kid at a park, and they see he sees somebody across the lane. And you think, that's Faye. But since Faye never shows up again, she must be not real. They kind of, they don't I do see much what you're to saying. I didn't really yeah. think about it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they she only ever talks to him, and that's the what essentially be it. I'm still trying to figure out whether or not the airport, though, was run by an actual mob boss. It definitely was not run by an actual mob boss. You know, boss. I would agree with that statement. Because the first memory when they go and talk to the manager of the airport, because the, the patient in this game wants to learn how to fly an airplane. Okay, so when he was very young, he went to the local airport and worked part-time and slowly learned how to fly a plane. And he talked to the manager of the place, and the dude ended up like a mafia thing. I'm like, okay, so it's just a kid having an active imagination and writing it up a little weird. Right. But... The manager shows up again, and he's still a mob boss. So I'm starting to think he was actually a mob <laughs> boss. I'm thinking he actually was. And that wasn't actually beautiful interpretation. It was legit. Maybe. I don't know. It's the same guy that had an imagination that almost made a real person. I mean, for all intents and purposes, in a lot of purposes, she was real. Right. And the way and that, that they... I, I, it was very nice at the very, at the end. Very wholesome, I should say. Yeah. Well, actually, that was one of the things I liked, because the Act 1 essentially tells you the twist of the game, too. It's, I will give you all that you will ever need. You will... I, I'm phrasing that wrong. Essentially, the big idea that it ended up being, what did we want... What did the patient want? And that was what he already had. That was the answer. Because the whole time, you figure out Faye was an imaginary friend... Okay, we need to get rid of her. That's all you try to do is get rid of Faye. But then you realize this man is nothing without her. She was the one who inspired him to be a pilot. She's the one who convinced him to go talk to the guy to be a pilot. She was the one who convinced him to continue practicing his instrument. Not not necessarily saying through apathy they chose to let her stay, but rather they'd be fucking up a whole bunch of different things yeah. if they actually took her out. She was a... While she was not technically real, she was a big part of his life. And it's one of those, you take her away, 
you change every bit of his life because she did so much for him. She practically can introduced him to his wife. Mm-hmm. And that's just incredibly interesting. I mean, so that was the essential final resolution. They kept on trying to get rid of Faye, trying to get control of the man's mind, and then they just said, enough. She's the one thing. And they end up removing themselves from call, from the patient's mind. And by removing like any advertisements he ever saw for it, all their billboards, he goes and talks to a Sigmund consultant about the memory transfer, the memory rewriting. They erase all of that and they just let him be. And Oh, and they also fix a couple things too. Like the yeah. like the writing in the sky, spilling the drink and all the other no, stuff. No, they left that. Did they Actually, if you look at that, they leave that. Because the regrets make that part of his life. Yeah. It's misspelled, but she still... Essentially, to fill that in, when he asks his wife to marry him, he asks his pilot instructor, who used to spell, like, do the chem... Not chem trails, but smoke trails in the sky that spell out, out, out words. Yeah, he was illiterate. He was illiterate and misspelled marry me, as he ended up sparing it, like, Merry Christmas. Yeah. So he screwed that up. And that was a regret that his marry me was screwed up. But she still said yes. He spilled his drink, but they still laughed and then swam in the ocean to clean her dress. They are regrets, but they're still what essentially made it. It wasn't the it's, perfect... I, I thought they changed all that. Nope. Okay, no. They may have changed the airport landing, because that one doesn't actually have a positive side to it. But no, when they kind of run back through it, they don't, they leave most everything the same. But the one thing that they do, there's essentially that scene since with this guy, you worked in a circle. You went from when he was 70 to 5 to 60 to 10. And the essential end of the game when you can walk through all of his memories is when he's 25. That's when he says goodbye to Faye and she never shows up again. He wanted Sigmund to come and essentially have Faye come and tell him goodbye. But Faye could always do that. Faye was his. It was his imagination, but for some odd reason he couldn't muster the strength to just tell her to come. And he... they got Sigmund got rid of themselves because the patient thought they can get her for me when he could. He could do it for himself. And that was a little painful to me. That I spent a five... what was the game? Three, four hours? Mm-hmm. And my essential job was to do nothing. To take us out. To take all the work we did out. Yep. That's what we needed to do. To remove ourselves from the equation. Because we are the problem. Ow. Right. That hurt. The, the <clears throat> His real wife was pissed when you take the contract too. Because she thought that he wanted... There was something deep in his life that... That like he was missing something in his low, low life. That he had unfulfilled in his life no he he was happy with his life there was nothing wrong with it yep and that super wholesome story yes it was it was wholesome as all get out still sad still quiet yeah it's when i came out and you're like are you done and i was like i feel very apathetic right now <laughs> well you came down and watched a movie with me so and i was very i watched affixed. the tail end of a movie yeah and i was very affixed in that movie so i didn't give a shit I was sitting on the couch crying, or on my bed crying. Where are you? When I finished this. Actually, one was on my bed, I was fine. But I was sitting there watching the last few scenes of the game going, God damn it! Why is it always sad? Why is it so sad? It hurts so good. Yes. Uh, and they have to have the vocal song coming right there, and it's about being what you always could. You can give yourself whatever you need. Why? Why are you so good at this? So I think we like the game. Yeah, a little bit. What'd you think about the ongoing narrative between To the Moon and Finding Paradise? I don't know what to make of it. There's not a lot of a continuation from To the Moon to Finding Paradise other than the same characters. Well, it's Neil and... It's Neil and Rosaline. Rosaline, but... But they're not really carrying anything. Well, okay, There's they the do make a joke about the previous game. And that, was, the, that was a really funny joke. It's okay, like, are I you going to delete her too? <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's got a twin. Dude, too, too soon. soon. <laughs> it's been months. Still. Not too soon. 
<laughs> oh my god. I did laugh at that and then went, mm. Yeah. But I'm uh, talking no about a kid getting run over. Ugh, that's not... Okay, I still laughed at it, but still, yeah. don't laugh at that. Yeah, but um, no, I'm talking about the background thing, like with uh, Neil being addicted to painkillers and the machine being augmented. Do you remember in To the Moon that... To the Moon, I don't think he was using the jailbroken machine. I, 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 I can't confirm or deny that, but there was a moment in To the Moon, as Neil was walking away, that everything got killer. fuzzy. No, that everything got fuzzy. He... Read like it, they were still in a memory, mm -hmm. and they were out of the memory, and they did everything. He adjusted his watch; everything went and perfected. It may perfected. have been the jailbroken machine. It may have been, but why were they in reality at that point? Oh, yeah, I remember what you're talking about now. Yeah, there's that, and then there's the ongoing. In the first to the moon, he brought up the fact that he needed painkillers and whatnot, and. Uh, Rosaline's like, hey, you're uh, not addicted, are you? And says, no. And then in this game, you actively had to go out and get... Painkillers. So he is addicted. Right. So, any con but in the middle of this, they had a comment about, I know what you're doing with the machine or something like that. Like, one of the quirky... They brought in more characters. Uh-huh. They essentially brought in another team. The team teams at Sigmund are one psychologist and one technician. Mm -hmm. And the other technician searched Neil's office. I actually like that because he left something in... He left essentially the patient folder in his office. So the girl hacked his door and got in, which I thought was hilarious. Because she's obviously... The other team is obviously way better than our team. But our team's funnier, so I like this team. Right. I'll keep with it. But, yeah. Watts jailbroke his machine and the other scientists... The other technician, because Watts is the technician... Rosaline is the psychologist. The other technician on the other team figured, found his legit machine. So they're like, this one's obviously jailbroken and fake. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. The dude does, he does weird shit. He makes video games, games in it. Which to be fair, I would do too. But, company property. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's a bit more sinister. I don't, not necessarily sinister, but I think there's more to it. There Especially is... at the end of To the Moon with the whole fuzzy scene. That was not... There was no... I would need to rewatch that scene a little bit and think about it a bit more. There, there was even a scene at the end of this game where I think they may have made a copy of Faye. Yeah, and, they definitely did make a copy of Faye. And they're essentially going to see if they can use her to help. I don't know. They made a copy of essentially a imaginary friend that is formed enough to be an actual person i think mm -hmm. and in a jailbroken machine like Faye talked to the characters usually memories well they logically talk mm -hmm. but they're still just memories this is a thing that never existed talking to you mm -hmm. actually you could argue it's memory. sentient it's not just yeah it wasn't just a playback memory it was it would be it like was, it was taking control of the system to, and fighting you. Well, no, it was like, uh, it would be like talking to a robot on the internet. Like, you type in something and they respond, but it's not actually thinking. Faye was actually thinking, was actually responding, thinking. and knows what you were doing. They were sentient. Mm-hmm. Well, she was sentient. So, they made a copy of her, and he doesn't, and to the moon, he said, I'm making another one. This one, he just does, yeah. to the moon one, finding paradise two. Dot, dot, dot. Don't D you dare do that. Dot, dot, dot. I don't know. <laughs> no. Like, maybe I'll do it, but I'm not going to say I'm going to do it, because that would make you want it. Yeah. Well, at the end of To the Moon, they legitimately had Finding Paradise underneath it. They told you you were going to do it. Mm -hmm. So, and, But then... Uh... He took his time with it. And if I could say one thing about this, usually, like, there's the comment of sequelitis, where the second game doesn't live up to the first one. Mm -hmm. This one, without a doubt, does. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I... Would you... I keep want to argue back and forth in my head, is it better than To the Moon? No. I kind... I like its story a bit more. It's a bit more wholesome. But I liked in To the Moon... They essentially made a twist. In To the Moon, they take away the man's childhood friend. And there's actually a fight. Right? In To the Moon, Watts is fighting Rosaline... Over what gets changed in the patient's memory. Right, they're gonna ch it, change his childhood friend and eventual wife. Yeah. Right. So they're like, they take it out, and then Watts is mad. He even like, I still love the favorite scene 
Rosaline has taken control, is changing the world, and is fighting Watts. She's trying to trap Watts so she he can't do anything. He picks up a phone phone that Rosaline's calling. And it's like Morpheus. What? What? What are you talking about? I'm not. I know it's not you. And it's just Watts screaming that he's pissed off. And he's like, this isn't fair. Put it back. So there's more character development and just personality into the moon. But for some odd reason, I like this one more because. Into the Moon, I felt helpless, and this one, I felt useless. Like, I can't do anything here. And I would say in Finding Paradise, the feeling was more pronounced. That may be because it's more fresh, because we played To the Moon freshman year of college, and now both of us are graduated. Right. Well, so I, I like passed. To the moon. The, the problem with To the Moon is To the Moon was out of left field. I had no clue about it. It was just a random game that I looked through a couple pages like, oh, it's an RPG Maker game. And it's well reviewed. Let's yeah, go for it. Yeah, I, and I played it once and I played it all the way through and it was, I played it with Terrence actually and I was like, T. We got done. I was like, my soul, my soul <laughs> was touched. And I was like, guy, you need to play this. Yeah. And I did and I was touched. Uh huh. And then we played this one. But here's the thing even though. I was expecting the same Big Bang as the first one. It still hit me hard. Right. And the only thing that may have also been, because when I started playing this, if I could say anything about the story, just stick... Th I This is the kind of game I want to play in one sitting. Just be aware. Yeah. The first hour or two is pretty slow. It is, yeah. And... The banter's funny, it's, though. It's, it's entertaining, it's but it's not... Yeah, it's not enough that I want... At some points, I was just continuing to continue. And they are, it, they're setting up stuff. They're setting up characters. They're setting up building personality. But that doesn't do a lot for me. It still makes it hard for me to pay attention. I started checking my phone and whatnot. But near to the tail end, it's like, oh crap, we gotta fix this fix. Ah, da, 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 da. And then personality comes out and then I'm crying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... use that damn song. I also like... To the moon better because I think the primary characters in it were a lot more interesting. Like I thought, River and their friends. And to the moon, and... yeah. And to the moon, it was essentially a very sweet old man. His wife had Asperger's. She had. She had autism of some sort. Yeah. Yeah, but it was the high functioning type. She could remember everything. She remembered everything, but was socially pretty much inept. Right. Which was she couldn't th communicate with her husband what she was feeling well, and whatnot. She couldn't communicate well. She could talk to him, but even he got confused on what she was talking about a lot of times. Right. So, interesting, but not what I was hoping for. Okay. Or yeah, I'll agree with you. They had more of an interesting. This guy, the patient in this one, he was an airline pilot who had a pretty good life. Right. Not You're... much more to write home about that. Yeah, I was, I was trying to figure out where they're going with it. <laughs> yeah. And to say that he, by all means, it was not boring, but there was a lot more character to be had with these. Although, now that we're rewatching some of the gameplay and whatnot, mm -hmm. who was the lady on the motorcycle? Okay, then. I don't know. Because they keep pointing out that motorcycle. <sighs> I want to say she was significant. Maybe she was just a red no, herring. No, I completely forget about forgot about. I don't think Ken Gao makes red herrings. No, he doesn't. He does it with a purpose, but his he has no problem with giving you I hear, a hair of thing. something. Here's my thing. If he's really good at making a story that stretches out across one game in two hours, I can't imagine the plot twist that's gonna happen three or four games down the road. Well, we may here's be... my here's my personal view. I think at that gonna... point one of us is going to have a kid because this dude does not work fast. No, but he works well. Yeah, but he um, I think they're going to be de be another patient, and then I think one of the main characters is going to be the patient in the fourth game, fourth and final, if he continues making them. That's my personal thing. Personally, I think it's Rosaline. I think is, we're getting is, a little too skeptical on this. Is the patient? Well, I, I mean, I think so, because no one else is filling her in with what's happening, including the two At other... the end of the game, yeah, like we said, we made a copy, they made a copy of Faye, 
Watts made the copy, and the other team also knows about the copy. Right. Rosaline doesn't. And he, it's a, he's not supposed to be doing it. It's against... He's not supposed to be using a piece of jailbroken equipment to treat patients. How do you feel if your nurse jailbroke your heart monitor? You would not be happy. He can, he can play Tetris now. <laughs> I was about to make that joke, yeah. No, but... I think the machines can actually play Tetris. Uh, later. Anyway, but yeah. So, I like the game. Yeah. It's good. Yes. It's a good sequel. Any yeah. other thoughts? Play it? Other than that, well, you gotta play To the Moon. We gotta figure out whether or not we gotta buy more music boxes, because we bought the music boxes from To the Moon, so we gotta buy the music boxes. Well, the music box isn't a sentimental thing. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. Music box was a thing in the first game. It's not a thing in the second. Or was it? Yeah, it was a game in the third. It was one of the mementos in the first game. Yes, it was. It was a memento. It was a big memento. Yeah. Yeah, it was. The, uh... I'm trying to think of what the equivalent would be. Uh, stuffed, uh, whatever, the red-nosed dog or... Rudog? Rudog. It was Rudog. Rudog. And they kept on asking, like, did they remember that correctly? Is he remembering that correctly? And then it's essentially the joke that they're avoiding copyright. Right. Some of those jokes, I'm like, You're, is, isn't yeah. that copyright? Was it a fusion of Rudolph and Clifford? Was that what I understood? It may be. Yeah. Except I think you find Rudog around. Oh, that's one more thing I wanted to bring up. Is this, did you catch why he made the imaginary friend now? He had no friends when he was little. He's had no friends, and he was and always alone at home. He was an only yeah. child. He Well, an only child, and his parents worked long hours. Right. So they were never home to be with him, so he made an imaginary friend. And he was picked on a little bit because he had to play the cello, which is the biggest and cumbersome of the instruments. Right. Short of the organ, but that's something else. So I... I I thought that was a good character thing. Yeah. And it brings back from, like, in the... Uh, that was, well... A bird story, that was the thing. You played as him as a younger kid. That's actually a thing I can add to that. To how you can notice Faye wasn't real. Because he talked to her... When he was young, he essentially yelled across balconies because her apartment complex was right next to his. Faye went to a private school. Her apartment complex did not look nice. Not in the least bit. His did. But she had, like, tires on the balcony sacks. Whoever lived in her apartment complex did not live a nice life. They're not going to afford private school. That's a good point. I never thought about that. It it struck me when she said that, but I stopped thinking about it. But it there's a lot of things, now that we think about it, are incongruous with her actual character. Right. So, like, things are just off with her. Huh. I take it back. There were... There were hints, but... When Ken Go does something, it's he doesn't write it out for you. He doesn't. If I'm going to lightly hint at something, that's exactly that. You're going to get one strand of this story, and it's going to take a lot of speculation for you to fucking figure it out. Well, that was over 50 minutes. I think we've explained our opinions well, and my butt hurts from standing, sitting on this weird seat. All right. Adjourned. Adjourned.